uh, New Year's Eve, and uh, I want to thank everybody for, you know, supporting Stunt Hanger and watching my videos. And uh, I thought that on New Year's Eve, I would build the second Millennium Wing, and uh, I got a different idea for this one. It's going to be a beam wing, a beam Millennium Wing. And we're going to put that together, and I, I don't think it's going to take that long to do. And uh, at the end of the footage, we'll go ahead and edit out the repetition so you don't get too bored. But I'd really like to know, how long does it take me to make one of these wings? So, let's get going. got a large pile of wood here. I think there's a, uh, well I know there's more than enough wood to build the wing with. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to have to figure out the beam. And how I'm going to do that is I have these foam cradles that already have the, the spar marked and we're just going to make this spar Oh, it's already here. It's already marked. So we're going to uh, measure the spar. This this is a this will give you an idea how to figure this out as well. Now you can do this with paper. I just happen to have these foam cuts here. So the first thing we're going to do is get a piece of paper here. We're going to plot our wing. I want a 60 inch wingspan. So it's going to be 60 inches minus 6. That's a 3 inch tip on each side. So, one side, let's see, we got 3 minus 3 makes 54, and we divide that by 2, let's see, 25, 27, one side is going to be 27, three quarters and the other side is going to be 27 the outboard so that will give us uh, 14 that will give us a uh, 59 and three quarter inches <clears throat> that's plenty that's good okay so now we have the uh, spar links inboard And uh, the measuring device. I don't think it needs to be that critical, so we'll just use a regular ruler here. And uh, our thickness of the spar is going to be inch and a half at the tip on both sides, so it's. 1.5 and the root at the spar is going to be 2 inches. Tip, root, 2 inches. Well, that was pretty easy. So, 2.0. So that that was absolutely simple <laughs> to figure out. So now we can uh, we can set these aside. The first thing we're going to need to make is a spar. 
and uh, we're going to make that an eighth inch balsa wood. This is another thing, never done it before. I want to see what works best with this uh, with this millennial wing stuff. I like it. It's uh, going to be a a valid way to do things. This time, instead of building it in two halves, we're going to build it all in one piece because it's a beam wing. Now my buddy Ron would say not to use stri strip ribs, but I'm going to use strip ribs for the simple fact it uses less wood. So now we have some uh, spar wood and I'm going to show you how I'm going to select that. Now most people when they go to the hobby shop just either weigh it or say well that's good enough or whatever but what we're going to do is we're, we're looking for the straightest grain so that the wing doesn't work. There's one. See, if you look at this piece of wood, it's got real good grain right here, but it gets to the end and it gets hard. We don't want any uh, any dissimilar hardnesses of wood. I think these all came out of the same tree. Now this won't be an I-beam, this is going to be a D-tube <laughs> beam wing. I think it will work great. Okay, I have the two pieces of wood that I'm going to use for the beam. I'm wondering how long this wing is going to take to build. I, I got a feeling it's going to build up real quick now that I know what I'm doing. We'll get some working room here. Okay, we have our spar here. I don't think that it'll uh, bend, warp, or whatever, but uh, we'll see. I have a center joiner piece of plywood. It's the only piece of plywood I have. I really, really should have one for each side, but I only have one. So I might use light ply on the other side. I don't feel that it's going to be that critical. So the first thing I want to do is I want to square up the end. We got our rib template there. I want to square up the end because we want the, this end to mate perfectly with the other piece. We're going to cut that off, I think. This is kind of like speed build. I want to see. I want to see if I can build this wing in one night. To be honest with you, see this piece of wood is checked. See how it's broken? No good. I made a bad bad choice of wood. So we'll come back over here. Look again. We certainly don't want any checked wood. I have seen a lot of wings fold up. This 
check here on people. And I believe the reason that they do fold up, poor selection of wood, poor fitment. I mean, there's a number of reasons. That looks pretty good. Now, after sand that. All right, we have the uh, the spar ends. Let's see if it's straight. Of course, it does not matter because the spar and it is yeah, it, it is straight. Okay, it does not matter because the spar is going to be drawn on this piece of wood. Now, we're, you waste a lot of wood this way, but it really needs to be done like this. So we're going to measure up 50%, and we'll make it inch and a half down. And I want to... I want to mark these two at the same time so we get it exactly the same. Inch and a half. And we'll come out here, inch and a half. Sounds like somebody's alarm's going off. Okay. This is the outboard side. And this is the center line. I'm going to jig this up a little different too than I did the other wing. The other wing came out straight. But the reason why I'm doing this is I was going to join that together in the foam cradles. Don't do it. Yeah, I, I can make it work. But I got a feeling that if you built it all in one piece, like we're going to do here, it would be better. Stronger. Now that wing that I put together in the first two videos is a usable wing. But let me tell you something. When you put as much time as I do in a finish and there's any question roots is two inches if there's any question that there might be a chance that it might fold or come apart there's no sense in going on and that's exactly what happened with that last wing from my poor planning so we're going to see if we can modify the building procedure slightly and make this an ultra strong way to do things. Okay. So we have inboard. It's an inch and a half at the tip, and the end board is 27 and three quarters. Now the next thing is that I didn't do, and I'm going to do after look, re reviewing the uh, directions, is leaving the spar piece on to go all the way to the end of the tip to hold the wing tip from warping. I, I think that's probably a good idea. So that's just a reference mark that it means absolutely nothing.
going to come in one inch for the first rib and that gives us our starting point. This is where the first notch will go on the spar when I jig it up on my table saw. So now we have uh, three quarter and three quarter. So there, what you're getting here by me showing you this is that it shows you how I build with no plans. I mean, yes, I know there's quite a few experienced builders out there, but there are some of you watching my videos that, that have never designed or built an airplane on your own, and this is how it's done, or how I do it. Some guys sit at the drafting table and spend hours drawing a set of plans but once you know how the operation works now we're going to leave this extra piece on the end until the wing is done and I insert the wing tips and I'll show you why and that's not my idea that's Tom's now, I don't know how long this video will run but as I stated I will I will edit it up. So let's cut this uh, spar out and hopefully that power in the wood doesn't make it warp. Your whole airplane, this is the backbone of your whole airplane right here. So it, it turned out perfect. It didn't didn't bend or or anything. No no warpage. But I did cut it a little bit off there. So we'll trim it up. Try to make this perfect. And that looks pretty good. So, that's the inboard side. Now we'll work on the outboard side. When I say 27, that's an oddball number. 
Let's see how that works out. So we got one. Got to kind of figure out where the ribs are going to fall. Two, four, six, eight, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. No good. That's 28 inches long. So we got to think about this for a minute. We got a wing that's 27. Let's go from the outside in. Twenty four, twenty six. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so it was correct. So we got it. This is our outboard final rib. Got to be thinking all the time. So we're going to measure up three quarters and one half. You know what I ought to do? I ought to just speed build this. Meaning, <laughs> we're starting on We're starting on New Year's Eve. Let's see how long it takes to frame it up. The only problem is I just don't have the energy like I used to have when I was younger. I used to be able to sit at the workbench for hours. And double check. This piece don't work. Went through a hard spot there. And that's why, because it sprung a little bit. It's got a little bit of tension in that wood there. But I think that because I'm saving the lion's share of it. I don't think it's going to move, but we'll see. If it does, I'll have to cut another one. If you don't get this piece right, your airplane flies goofy. Shape. Now let's mate them together and see if they make perfectly. They do not. So I have to trim this one. I left the line on. I should have took it off.
Hmm. Still not enough. But it's better to have not enough than and cut it too much. Okay, so here we have our spar. Now you wonder why am I marking this rib here? This is actually the start. We know that the end board is going to be a half inch longer, or three quarters of an inch longer. But we have to start at a place where it's going to come out even and look right when the airplane is covered and sitting on uh, the flight line, because you don't want to you know, see some goopy rib spacing. So if we start from the center and we move out two inches, inch on each side of the center line leaves a two inch spacing, then two inch more, and two inch more, so on and so forth. That That's absolutely uh, perfect for rib spacing. So what I want to do now set up my table saw. Excuse me, I'm going to have to step in front of the camera. <coughs> and if you remember in my other video, I already had jigged it <coughs> for rib space. this out we're going to have to uh, I'm going to cut both spars at the same time so they're exactly the same I'm going to have to cut the first notch by eye glad I remember 
remembered I gotta set the depth. The depth will change because we moved the location. in the wrong spot there but that's not a big deal or just, you know there, there's no pressure on that way out there at the tip just take a piece of wood and stick her in there typical not paying attention That's all right. Fixed. Easy enough. One thing that's nice about balsa wood is uh, there are no mistakes. <laughs> Just stick a piece of wood in it, glue it, sand it. There you have it. That's the notch that I, <clears throat> I messed up, but it's okay. So now, Need to cut the uh, cut the other side. Well, I think my beard is really going to go as a New Year's resolution. Okay, we have the spar made, oh, we have the spar rib cut, and I think I'm going to take a break, I'm starting to get a little tired. Now what's going to happen at the tip here, is this is going to angle down be a notch in the tip to hold the eighth inch plate and as I stated that's not my idea that's the top this is outboard yeah. in 
board. It's a valid way to do things. I mean, uh, as they stated, I'm just, I'm just trying some different things to see what I like best, and uh, so far, I mean, so we're going to have a three-inch tip. I don't know whether all this will get used up, but we're going to mark it three inches. And that's where... It's... Matter of fact, I, I would say that this angle is going to be substantially different because this is closer to the leading edge. So that gives you the idea of what we're what we're doing. We're cutting this piece to hold the tip plate. But I know the tip won't be any more than three inches, so if I draw this and cut it at three, or leave enough material for a three inch tip, that'll be plenty. on here. As a doubler. Yeah, this will be fine. <coughs> so, when I come back from my break, we'll glue this piece together. get it straight. I'm also going to need to cut a hole in it for the bell crank. Sliding down the line to make sure that it's straight, and it is dead, not straight. So this will be a real good way to do things. It will be a super straight way. going to get drilled right there anyway, so it doesn't matter whether it's a good joint or not. That's where the bell crank pivot's going to be, right in, right down through that hole. <laughs> 